What's up, everybody? It's no- time for another episode of Silver Screen Stand Up, ladies and gentlemen. And holy shit, it was this was a tough one. Jesus, this this was a t- I, I didn't remember this movie being this bad. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, sometimes maybe forget stuff for the better. I am joined this month to make fun of bad movies by Liz Tripley and Alex Homiak. Uh, Alex provided us with some extra beer. This, uh, yeah, Alex. Yeah, um, I, I get beer for each one of these little viewings we do for the, for the comedians come in, beer and pizza, to say hello. Um, I didn't get enough beer. Alex, Alex provided additional beer that we needed, and I appreciate that highly. Uh, a six pack for three people. I don't. Are we fifteen? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Spring for the twelve. Oh man, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, this is Silver Screen uh, Stand Up Podcast, where comedians make fun of bad films. Uh, guys, so uh, before we get into uh, things, this was a night that, that it, it didn't want to happen, and, oh. and maybe after we saw the movie, that was just God trying to warn us, because... Don't do it. Yeah. Don't just, do it. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do this. Right, because you, you got caught up at work, right? I got stuck at work. And then when I put your address into the, to the Uber, because I can't drive, um, I sent it to the wrong part of town. That's not surprising for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> and then this, the fucking same thing happened to you, Alex. Like, can't, like, legally or can't you never learn? No, I, I, I learned I'm very horrible at it. Oh, so I you hit shouldn't. a house. No, you I shouldn't. shouldn't. That's, I'll um, take that. I hit a house, and after that, that I said, you know what? Maybe that's the bus good, is... That's a good lesson learned. You know? <laughs> Most people don't take that away, mm. even after they hit a house. They just mm. keep going. No, that was... my, my mom hit a Wendy's once, and she's still driving. <laughs> she a drinker fan? <laughs> no, no, she was a drinker afterwards, no. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Anybody from the, the my family watching... Is mom watching this? No, no, probably. No, my mom... Uh, my mom's she afraid... She has better things to do. Yeah, so she's got better things to do. She's afraid of computers anyway. She's one of those people who are like... She's not old enough where she couldn't learn. She's just scared of technology in general. Can, can I say real quick, and it's a shame that Vincent's mom is not watching, because she's adorable. Yes, yeah. I just just, just a disclaimer, I exaggerated the Wendy's incident. It was just she hit the curb really hard, okay? so okay. And my mom is, I love you. Mom, if you're watching, or if anybody from the family is relaying this information, <laughs> I love you. Don't get all crazy the next time I come over the house. Yeah, the way you put it, it sounded like she plowed into the side of a Wendy's. I heard she like killed a man. man. That's how I like to tell it. That's how I tell it. I just said she went right through. There were fucking patties all over the goddamn place. Yeah, she Vincent. killed Wendy. Squirrel came up and grabbed the patty. Ran off. Don't worry about that shit. My family's Russian, so they're either dead or drunk. (laughs) Oh man! All right, so now, guys. uh, So now we got a show coming up on Saturday. Give a little quick plug. We got uh, Liz. Tell tell people about the show. It's uh, the Victory Variety. Review. Yes. I, I fucking the Victory I know, Variety. I, there. Don't I forgot the what it was. You don't know the name. <laughs> it is the Victory <laughs> Variety. I went dead for a second. Listen, I watched Bubble Boy. <laughs> I'm like 15 IQ points I dumber do, right I now. I feel emotionally traumatized. Right now. Yeah, I feel really. I honestly like while we were watching this movie, I, I kept looking at the both of you guys every once in a while. I, I legit felt a little bad. You can usually have like. I mean, we'll get more in, more into it, but uh, Liz, I think we can both agree. F- fuck, fuck you, Vince. Yeah. <laughs> fuck you. Yeah, you I was that? thinking that all the way over here. I, uh, not that I would enjoy it, but I feel like I um, I have to take that fucking. So yes, you can you can say fuck me all you like. <laughs> like um, but yeah. Anyway, uh, so yeah, uh, this so Saturday at Hambones. What's it? What's the name of the show again? Oh, the actual name of the show yeah. is uh, the Victory Variety Review. Yes, uh, oh music and comedy show this Saturday night at Hambones. Host by our good friend, uh, well, we used to call her Liz Victory, but now she's Victory Mohan because she got married this past year. Um, it's her birthday show, basically. So a bunch of uh, comedians will be doing stand up. You, me, um, so, no, there will be actually no comedians on it. It's <laughs> just guaranteed. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. No, and, actually, uh, that's uh, you're already fucking it up. That's not the host. Who's hosting? Jesus Christ. You you're, guys don't you know hosting? anything about no, the show that you're on. Brian Crawford. Brian Crawford's hosting? Over the river's edge. Oh, my God. The guy who basically Jesus decides whether my show continues or not. Sorry, Brian. Shut off right now. <laughs> hey, Brian. Where is, where is the show again? Hambone. <laughs> yeah, the show's at Hambone's and Lawrenceville. Anyway. I think that part's right. The Burning, the burning Bridges mm-hmm. thing? Yeah, yeah. The, the burning Bridges Comedy show. Club at Hambone's. All right. So uh, yeah, I guess it, we'll stop. Time? Uh what seven seven Jesus seven, seven shut up i've been busy this week i've been busy 
What the fuck would you guys do if I wasn't here? Right now? I don't know. I would know, know what the show was called, who was hosting it. I, I knew the name of the show. I was just giving it to her. Yeah, you shouldn't have. You should not have done. Well, now that. I know. Now, now I know. You know. And knowing's half the battle. Oh. All right, um, Alex. Is there anything you want to plug before we destroy something else about that show? I have an awesome show on Friday, but it's sold out. So. Oh. Yeah, so it's at Club Cafe with Stavros Halkas. It's. Uh, I'm excited about it, so it should be a good time. But. Uh, you know, I don't know if they're doing standing room. Just call the venue, bombard them with calls. And Just stand outside the door. Stand outside. With your ear. Yeah. Go to Jack's. Get in here. Sneak in. Get in here. All right. Oh, yeah. It's, I'm, I'm excited. It's going to be a good show. I love performing at Club Cafe, man. It's one of my favorite. Oh, yeah. Club it's Cafe. Great, great venue. Uh, my family used to own it. Really? Fun fact. Oh. They don't now, but, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now that it's cool. They had to, they had to pay the lawsuit out when you drove on the side of that house. <laughs> bankrupt. Shit is not cheap. <laughs> Anyway, so let's, uh, I mean, I feel like I want to put it off more, but I guess, but this is what the show's about. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to talk about the movie Bubble Boy. Came out in 2001, starring a very young Jake Chillenhall and a, a bunch of other surprising actors. We'll get into them as it goes, but uh, the basic plot of the film is... There is it, no fucking plot. That, that, that is, is true. The, the, what, what, the plot of the film is him, is Jake Chillenhall running away from camera in a bubble suit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that script is forty fucking pages long. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's. it's I, I mean, I know it just felt long, like, but it had to be at least ten, one to two minute sequences mm. of him just moving away from camera in a bubble suit. So it's like Lord of the Rings <laughs> <laughs> in a bubble suit. Except we didn't have the beautiful fields of New Zealand as a backdrop. We had... Yeah, somehow Bubble Boy felt longer yeah. than those seven-hour movies. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> Even yeah. if you put in the extra features yeah, that they have the on the fucking cut, DVD. Like yeah. When they do Still. those screenings where they do all three back to back mm. and only the true the true hardcore incels, which is <laughs> on brand for this movie, yeah. <laughs> can actually go to that. that. This movie still... How long was that movie? An hour and 24 minutes? Hour, 24, hour, 26. I somewhere. included the credits, I realized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did. We were you were checking it out. Well, there's another ten minutes left in the movie. There might have been like a sequence, like an extra credit sequence after the credits. Teaser. Yeah, post credit. I don't know. We I was checking around the sequel, Bubble Child so or something. It's a, a prequel, a gritty prequel. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, that would have been a super fuck. Like they could do a really fucked up prequel. Yeah. Oh, you just put it out into the ether. Yeah. Because the core conceit, the core conceit is that it's. I mean, we. I'm not. I don't care. We're spoiling this, right? Oh no. Fuck yeah. Say whatever. Fuck yeah. Uh, spoilers if you haven't oh, seen oh, Bubble Boy in the past boy. 17 years. Fucking unwatchable. Yeah, have at it, Alex. But the, the mom keeps Jake Gyllenhaal sealed in a hermetic bubble <laughs> and shames him with Republican propaganda when he goes through puberty and gets his first erection. Uh, <laughs> which, uh, that was the most disturbing scene in the movie. But, like, they could do a gritty prequel where it's just the mom, like, darkly caressing him with rubber gloves, hiding him away from the world. <laughs> Just making him watch Leave It to Beaver. <laughs> yeah, mm. it really does. Like, the, the, what, like I know it doesn't. Ha I know the premise like dies quickly, but it does have the premise of like this could have been like a horror movie. This could have been, it I, really I, like? It's got to be a YouTube video where it's recut to be a horror movie. Yeah, I, and it, porn. And porn. <laughs> but it's actually the same <laughs> film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So, so for those of you who haven't seen the movie. Uh, uh, once again, I, like, the plot doesn't matter. But basically, Jake Gyllenhaal, he's born without any natural immunity, which means any little germ could kill him instantly. So he lives in a bubble for most of his life. And his mom is this crazy, nutso, Republican, religious, fundamental, crazy bitch who, like... Uh, uh, just uh, secludes him in their house like for his entire life. For Trump, like what? That's yeah. Kind yeah. Of how I imagine it. Like yeah. evangelical Christian, but still super racist, and is yeah. just totally okay with kind of bringing those two things together. Right. Uh, and then he falls in love with a girl. She gets married. She's going to get married to some asshole, and he goes on a road trip to stop the wedding. Blah blah blah. You've uh, the, the, the the nice sweet girl who's marrying the asshole, and the nice good wholesome boy is going to remind her that they belong together, and she doesn't belong with him. Blah blah blah. The wholesome boy who lives in a bubble and can't physically touch this. Yes. Woman. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, that's that's how you know it's true love because they don't touch each other. <laughs> <laughs> Keep telling yourself that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, 
that's what the director was telling himself the whole fucking time. It's like, this is what love is about. Um, this is I gotta make this work. I gotta make this work. A woman from a distance. Yeah. Who wants nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm a socially maladapted weirdo. Yeah. Now, yeah, Alex, go ahead. Talk more about Jake Gyllenhaal's character, Jimmy, because he's, even though he's the main character, he's probably, I mean, in my opinion, probably the most boring character in the fucking film. He, he's, he just, he just kind of like, he's well, not I, there to be liked. He's, he's just there to bring in all the side he's, characters. He's not supposed to have, he, he is basically just a vessel through which cameos appear. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much his only function. And not even good cameos. Yeah. Except for Zach Galifianakis. Except for Zach Galifianakis, who's in the film. And he's still funny. Yeah. He, he is the best part of the film for a character that's probably in there for only, what, three, maybe combined four minutes because he like shows up like a few minutes later. He is the best part of the film. And you'd figure with someone who's like, I mean, with, with you have that many two minute montages of Jake Gyllenhaal running in a bubble, just put 15 minutes of Zach Galifianakis riffing in there. Yeah. Just why? What's I mean, I guess this was before. It was before Hangover, so and this was so bad that yeah. everyone, like everyone, was like, "We can't. Let's not worry about making this good in any way. Yeah, no. <laughs> Let's not worry about that." No, not at all. Oh man, yeah. So, um, yeah, as we were watching the movie, um, you brought this up several times, Alex. That uh, that uh, our Bubble Boy is basically an incel. Yeah. It was an incel allegory. Yeah, is really oh. is what it felt like. To me. It was just a long journey about a useless incompetent socially dysfunctional weirdo who idolizes and can't touch women yet still feels entitled to their love mm -hmm. and, and enough to break up a wedding <laughs> <laughs> with the presumption to break up a wedding with a real human man who does push-ups who can fuck this woman <laughs> Oh, I, I assume he does cock push-ups <laughs> from the character. But we can also so. assume, I, I think we did both have the same realization that like the the main villain would have given her the same number of orgasms as the bubble boy with his toe. Like, just that's not a man who's worried about what and where the clitoris is. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's, it's just everyone in it was so horrible. I, I know. I, my favorite part, though, and it was the one part, we'll get into the racism in a second. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, we, there's no way we can't cover it. That's going to take up 20 minutes at least. I mean, it took up 20 minutes of the hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> maybe 30 maybe 40 I mean it was like half I don't know. the movie we still got some time we got plenty of time to go over this it was just racist yeah the movie yeah the movie literally should have been called Bubble Boy Meets Stereotypes grotesque just but as, as pointed out and I, I'm really astounded didn't do a gay stereotype. Didn't do a gay stereotype. Yeah. I can't believe it. it was remarkable, I don't think actually. they didn't have the song for it, I think. Yeah. No, unless unless the uh, unless the unless the, the, the uh flipper kid was gay and we didn't know about it, it was just too subtle for us to pick up on. Did I you mean also that his hands were just his hands stuffed in like pantyhose. <laughs> like they didn't even take the time to do a, a, an actual prosthetic. Thing. Yeah, like the, the skin tone of like the flipper hands were the same Completely skin tone as the rest of his face. Yeah. Just stuff your hands in this mitten. Yeah. You're a, and you're like, a well, we'll, we'll fix it in post. It's fine. <laughs> fine. But they blew their CGI budget on that four second shot. <laughs> Jake Gyllenhaal floating in the Niagara Falls. Yeah. They're like, wait, all right, we'll get it in post. Like, wait, what? What? But this is we, already out. I wait. Thought, I thought you said we had some of the budget left. We blew our what we budget. Oh Jake god Gyllenhaal damn it! Falling down Whatever. Niagara Falls <laughs> in a bubble. <laughs> okay, I looked it up. He did three movies came out that year. Right. That he did, which was uh, now I forget. It's I think it was Don Donnie Darko. Donnie Darko. And Bubble Boy, and then was something it a, and something. Well, know. the only other movie I know from from that time period of career is, is uh, I mentioned uh, October Sky, which was based on. But that was before that. That was before that. Yeah. That was my here's the thing. I'm, it is worth saying. I actually saw October Sky before Donnie Darko, so to me that was my introduction to Jake Gyllenhaal, and it was a good introduction because I like that film. Uh, if you have never seen uh, the movie uh, October Sky, it's based on real events of you know. Uh, check it out. It's actually a cool film. I think I, like, was that the movie that his agent told him he had to do? I like for politics? I feel something? like yeah, I feel like that's totally one of those scenes. It's like, okay, listen, kid, you got a couple of good movies under your belt. We've been doing good so far, but you're under contract. You gotta star in this comedy film. It's called uh, the the Bubble Child. Okay, it's, the name's probably gonna get changed or something. But uh, you gotta be in this. Uh, it's not it's not gonna be pleasant. I've seen the script. Okay, but you're under contract. It's either do this movie or uh, you gotta go see Harvey Weinstein. It's either one of those. Gyllenhaal still a whole dicked it though. That's what was amazing to me. But it's like such a dedicated actor because he's made a lot of choices, yeah. like eccentric voices and eccentric facial tics. And I was like, he's really doing everything that he can with this. He's like, God damn it, I will. Thing. 
find there. the gem in this. Or he, just, or he just tried to play it as stupidly as humanly possible. He's like, well, I'm just going to be the biggest asshole that I can because no human being has ever behaved anywhere near no. anyway. No. Like he behaved the entire time. Yeah. Because he lived in a fucking bubble. Well, yeah. What I was saying, like, they, they make the character out there. He's supposed to be so, like, innocent and pure despite the fact that, you know, how evil his mom is. And we're going to get to his mom in a minute. That... Everybody he meets just loves him, and it's, and it's like, but no, like oh, the only person that sees him as like a weirdo is Zach Galifianakis, which is where we get some of our our comedy. Like again, the funnier scenes. Uh, the five seconds of comedy in that. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it's just like no, he's too weird and like naive. And once again, it's like, dude, do you have a plan for this chick? I was saying, if you grow up in a bubble, you're not eccentric. Like that. That's it. he. He was like super outgoing and yeah. super out there. And just like I think the conceit was like, oh, he was so hungry for experience. Yeah. Like if you grew up in a fucking bubble, <laughs> if you saw the sun for the first time. Are you kidding me? You'd be right back in that fucking bubble. <laughs> I don't know why I'm questioning the logic of bubble <laughs> boy rather than focusing on how shitty it is. <laughs> he didn't spend enough time like just crying in the yeah. fetal position, like we did from having to watch it. But right. like, that's the difference. All right. Live it. There are yeah. bad movies you can have fun with, but this one was just like. No. It was very painful. It just yeah, was sad and angry. I know. Usually, usually at the end of, of an episode of Silver Screen Standups, I ask I ask one, one of the comedians like, "Is this movie uh, a good bad movie? It was so bad that uh, but it was good because it was entertaining. How bad it was, or is we this just bad bad? I'm not even gonna ask we it. We need to go. We know. I'm not. Uh, I'm not. It, it's just like one of those movies. Like, <laughs> if anyone's seen a uh, previous episode, it's like I'm not even. You're like, oh, what are they gonna hateful. say? Yeah, hateful. No, <laughs> deeply problematic. Yeah. And uh, that is embodied by Bubble Boy's mom, uh, who is the one who like the dad doesn't talk much throughout most of the film. I thought he I don't think he talks. Yeah, that's his whole thing. Yeah, totally controlled by the domineering wife. He just sits there, cowed, silent, going along, allows her to keep to lie to him his entire life, so he doesn't experience anything. Meanwhile, she's a fucking hypocrite. And let's Danny Trejo was in this. Danny, always good, glad to see Danny he, Trejo. He couldn't make it fun. Like, no, oh. it was. <laughs> they were just like Danny Trejo. Just do that thing that you're always paid to be, and then we'll put you in this movie. We'll give you a knife. You'll say a few Mexican words that are like cuss words. Don't be and, racist at all. No, oh god. Stereotype on stereotype. I am. Um, do you know well, he actually was in federal prison? Danny yeah. Trejo? yeah. Oh yeah. No, that's what I actually love about Danny Trejo. It's like he's not pretending to be. A hardcore badass. He lived that life. He was the light heavyweight boxing championship of the prison system. The really? State, the state, yeah, the state prison system. Okay, that part I didn't know. I don't know. Yeah. That is so. Oh, Danny Trejo is just getting more and more <laughs> awesome by the second for me. <laughs> He's God actually damn. never acted in any film. <laughs> just get him a little drunk. He just showed up on. He just shows up on random sets. He's like, hey, Bato. I wonder if he resents that. <laughs> I like Danny. How do we not typecast you? <laughs> You can't be a step, a suburban step dad. <laughs> oh god, yeah. Or like, oh, like the closest he ever came to was like, uh, he was in the uh, the Spy Kids films, right? He was their uncle or something. Was that him? I think so. I mean, surprise events. I've never seen. I mean, Spy Kids <laughs> films. <laughs> it's Rodriguez, so I assume that he's in it. But oh yeah, because because he, he knows Rodriguez. Because Rodriguez is just like, I'm oh, making a movie. Just put him in there somewhere. Yeah. I don't know. He was in Desperado. Rodriguez did that. Desperado is a fucking awesome movie. It is a fucking awesome movie. That's why Machete really let me down. Except for the song that played the entire time, like every time Danny Trejo walked on camera, just went machete, 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 machete. 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 <laughs> what, it's just like oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like less of anything else. Wasn't Charlie Sheen the president in that? We should yeah, in the second machete. one. We're, yeah, that, <laughs> as we fucked up. Yeah, uh, Charlie. Yeah, he was in the second one. The, fir- <laughs> the first one, he uh, the bad guy was Robert De Niro, and then the second one, the second one had two bad guys. Uh, there was. Uh, I forget who the first the actor the first bad guy. I've never seen him in anything else. But uh, that Mel Gibson was the bad guy in the second one towards which the end. Checks out. Which was good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Again, was not scripted to be no. on that. Showed up. Yeah, to he set. just riffed the whole thing and started yelling racist shit. About Mexicans. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, it's working. <laughs> Let's roll like? with it. He's like, he seems pretty Get evil. In the can. The yeah. he really went method on this. <laughs> auditioning in the moment. It's incredible. He even came in an evil man costume. That's amazing. <laughs> That's so the, the Bubble Boy. It was like. 
I think that what they were doing is they were doing what it, 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 the movies in the early 2000s went through this period where they did like safe bigotry. Like it was the type of shit that everyone was like, <laughs> oh, the like Asian Americans aren't an oppressed group. Let's just attack them hideously and make them this grotesque stereotype with like ridiculous accents and then like it, you know, and then uh, like freak show people you know like, yeah. like people who are just, yeah. just Always diff- different you know they're just like the yeah. oh, fuck them like oh, come on it's not the 20s anymore they're not locked in cages <laughs> fuck them they're fine <laughs> Fuck them. Look at these fucking freaks. <laughs> laugh at them. Laugh. And you're like, fuck, fuck, yeah. man. Oh, God. Yeah. The the, the, uh, the freak show people he meets, like, uh, one of them was uh, Beetlejuice, who most people remember from the Howard Stern show. That motherfucker cannot act. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Cannot. <laughs> He has no job. I was no. very disappointed. Uh, very disappointed. Oh yeah, when him give him a line. Yeah. I don't know why they gave him dialogue. He didn't need it. Because people know him because he's on Howard Stern. Oh, well, he was. Yeah. 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 I love when him and Bubble Boy like first meet. Like the like they they accidentally surprise each other. And, you know, Bubble Boy's like ah, and, and, and it was weird. What people just he was it like was, going ah, was, but he wasn't it was looking. Still unnatural. Yeah. He, he, <laughs> like it was so like like it was so unbelievably screen. But he wasn't even looking at the camera. He was kind of looking off to the side as if somebody was he coaching was him. Like at the direction. Oh, yeah. scream and wave your. Heads, or, ah, oh, you know. so it's just fucking scream. Yeah. Like, I'm not expecting, like, an Academy Award performance out of fucking Beetlejuice. Fucking Don't get me wrong. Just yell. But, oh, God. I mean, the, the, the giant guy who was, like, a, like that was a weird thing. Only, like, several, only, like, two or three people were actual the people. With, yeah, we're, like. Wait, the, can I say that? No. Was, we're that, getting canceled right now. That that giant guy was in a, an actual good movie. Who what? Uh, that that weird that giant the Sasquatch guy. man. Oh, the giant that's that's what they call him in the movie. See, I feel like even bad calling them by their name was Clark. Let's call Clark. Him yes, Clark. 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 Clark was in a, that movie with you and McGregor. Oh, that one. Not the oh, uh, B- Big Fish. Big, oh, Big Fish. Yeah, the Tim Burton film. Big yeah, fish. that guy was good in that. Okay. Clark's got chops. <laughs> Should have given him more air. And they still made him tear the roof off a Cadillac. <laughs> like a giant freak for no fucking reason. <laughs> Ugh. Oh god damn it! I feel like, like you could feel the shame yeah. coming out of, out of every actor. Like the the they had the Indian stereotype, another safe, yeah. another safe form of bigotry at the time. They're like, ah, it, the Indian people are fine. There's, yeah. You could just mock them hideously. <laughs> All you gotta do is put them on the side of Bubble Boy, and then it's fine. Oh my god! I, it, it was that was a, like it was. I was trying to hate it enough to get angry, but it just made me very sad. I know. <laughs> like, it was so, yeah, because everybody in there's I don't I can't think of an, one character that really isn't a stereotype. Because even Zach Galifianakis, he's funny. Is he's a guy at a shitty job that hates everything. Yeah. Even that's like, even the best part of the film is stereotype. Because let's let's go through all the stereotypes. You got uh you got Danny Trejo and his biker gang. Of course, you know he, he's so like the criminal. Mexican. Yeah, the criminal guy. Yeah. I mean, uh, you've got uh, the, the the freak show people, which only some of them were legitimate people. That was what like, three? A lot of people did just had yeah. weird makeup. On. Yeah, that ba- like yeah. bad makeup at that too. There was a contortionist, and they just kept making her yeah. put her leg over her. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's yeah. how I walk don't around. Don't forget. Yeah, you could live a normal life, woman. Just don't twist <laughs> just your legs. Stop putting your fucking legs over. Yeah, just only around. reveal that in bed when it's helpful. Just yeah. like that's the only time you need this. Like stage, like, yeah. there's no need. Yeah. Uh, then you had. Uh, uh, well, you had oh, there was the, the short scene where they had like the 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 hillbilly hicks that are making fun of the Indians. Oh, oh I forgot hicks. about the, the hicks. That is one safe stereotype that I always will like. But here's the it wasn't still wasn't funny. I'm like, except when oh. they blew that whole fucking hick town up, and yeah. I thought they killed all of them, and I was like, holy shit! I thought for a moment the movie had balls, <laughs> and then they showed all the hicks running safely away yeah. from their blowing up oil derrick, and I was like, fuck that shit! <laughs> Every time you think that movie's gonna have some balls, yeah. It just lets you down. Yeah. Which is ironic because it's Bubble Boy, which he lives inside a ball, basically, you would think. No balls. But that was it. I think they thought they did One have balls. big ball. ball. That's all we need. I thought. I think they thought they were being so edgy. fucking edgy. edgy. Yes, edgy and like... The edge oh. lords of the <laughs> late 90s and the <laughs> 2000s. People, the people are going to remember this film. This could be... That, it was just like... It was a weird thing. It was like... It's, it's presented as like a goofball type comedy, right? 
and yet it's so mean. It's, it's just so, yeah. a mean, and lazy. cruel, lazy. Yeah, so fucking lazy. Like there was like no real ideas. It's just like okay, what be a funny line or a funny joke? And they're just like just have them run into people who are funny, like f- the funny once again the funny the stereotype like, thing. Funny looking, funny yeah. acting. Although I would have loved if that movie had ended right after the Zach Galifianakis interaction when that bus hit him and he just died. <laughs> yeah, <I> mean, <laughs> he just got misted inside that ball, yeah. filled it with his with his effluence. It didn't cut out all the like all the shots of him just like being in the ball running away it probably that would have been the same time frame of what was actually filmed for the movie it's just up until the, like the first 20 minutes it felt film. like a shitty pilot that someone went I just built someone went <laughs> way too deep this isn't live though right you can edit that up oh like, yeah it felt, like a shitty, it felt like a shitty pilot that someone like lost like they put too much money into it and then managed to stretch it and pimp it and get enough cameos to turn it into a feature length (laughs) film which to be honest whatever coke addled hustler in 1999 (laughs) who like sunk his whole fucking nut into this shitty bubble boy pilot and was like god damn it no one's buying this piece of shit we gotta do something and they're like you'll never make it a movie Chuck you'll never make it a movie I'll show you and he just runs over town crushing eight balls convincing random B-list celebs to hop on board <laughs> and just stretch it and then he's like if we just shoot 35 minutes of Gyllenhaal in this goddamn <laughs> bubble it'll be a movie I tell you <laughs> one day he's gonna be sexy I tell you yeah, one well, day well, was, I mean we saw his ass and some underwear at the end of that that's a nice yeah. ass yeah, yeah. It wasn't about like, ass. Yeah, it's not surprising he's Can become a Hollywood heartthrob. For me, Liz, I mean, it was you saw. I saw that ass. I was like, that's a that's a nice. Ass. I mean, yeah. no, like that was the one part that stood out for me. Well, there were two parts. That, stood <laughs> that out was for the me. nicest shot in the whole thing. <laughs> the first part that stood out for me, I was like, somehow through all of this hideous muck, Jake Gyllenhaal's sweet ass still looks great. It was a shining star <laughs> in the mil- in the il- inky blackness of deep space. <laughs> <laughs> But the best part, the only good part of that whole movie, other than Jill and Hall's ass, was the end where they were like, "Here, the happy ending of the movie." Oh yeah. Is that these old women get double teamed by the two loves of their life? <laughs> oh that yeah. At, at the end of the movie, such which, an odd choice. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of the movie, and I called this ahead of time because uh, when he meets Danny Trejo's character, uh, Mexican criminal man, I, I can't remember what the hell his name is. Uh, I believe it's Mexico criminal man. Yeah, really? Oh, okay. In the script is yeah, how M- they wrote it. MCM. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he he speaks of, and that's that's a recurring other theme. Uh, I guess because they're trying to connect it to Jake Gyllenhaal's like character arc. His uh, arc? Did you just say that? <laughs> His art, it was a flat line. <laughs> it wasn't, it was one dimension. It literally, it literal, literally just a like, linear path. They, they had a stagehand hold up the arc to make it work. <laughs> no. Uh, but yeah, but like they say, like multiple characters talk about a love that they lost, right? Danny Trejo's character is like, you know, oh, I had this, you know, love, and you know, it, it, he shows his, ta- his, his don't famous do the accent. Test. Please don't do the accent. <laughs> I apologize. He's swept up in the bubble boy racism. <laughs> Sweeping the nation. What has this movie done to me? Or was it there the whole time? Yeah, don't just know. don't start doing a Chinese <laughs> accent <laughs> next, Vance. Okay. Please. Don't no. start saying $500. I won't. I won't. But anyway, he talked about like the, he, this former love he had. And then at the end of the movie, and I called this, I was like, please let the former love be bubble boy's crazy evil mom and it turned out it was it's not fair because you saw this a while ago all right that was I, kicking around in your lizard brain all right, don't get all smug <laughs> Vince maybe I don't know I, I mean it's is, such a far jump like who saw that coming like that's so deep <laughs> this movie is so dumb that I mean I predicted the, the ending in the first 10 minutes and then I realized 20 minutes in if I hadn't predicted the ending I would have stopped watching movies because oh, yeah. I'd feel like unworthy <laughs> Of like it's just the stupidest, most predictable possible thing. Yeah. But so Jake Gyllenhaal's ass. Yeah. Um, and the double team. So like the, the yeah. end of, the end of the movie, the happy ending is that. So as Vincent said, Gyllenhaal's like super uptight Republican mom who was like a hypocrite, repressing her raw animal nature, starts getting dicked out by Danny Trejo, <laughs> and it wakes up her inner demon and her ability to experience joy through, you know, I don't know, vaginal orgasm, and. At the end, so at first it's like the mom's in biker gear and yeah. she hops on a bike with Trejo and everyone's like, okay. Right. Standard. Yeah. Then it zooms out a little further and the cuck dad is driving the motorcycle <laughs> with this greasy smirk on his face and all leathers. And I'm like, 
This is their, this is their, I mean, and that honestly, what they didn't realize is that is the bravest and like most progressive choice that they made in that whole film. I know, right? Is that they were like, no, they found their happiness together. A Mexican criminal, a suburban dad, and whatever the hell, the, and a religious and sex crazed nut all came together in a beautiful, you know, spit roast of love to, to, to run away. <laughs> <laughs> like spit roast of love, <laughs> shocking choice. That it's was the just, most. That's what Trejo's. That's movie. what his dick does to you. Yeah. It's just. I could. What do you guys think Trejo's dick looks like? Really? Oh. I think um, it's like chewed up uh, gristle. Like uh, I don't mean uh, to. Oh. I mean like, uh, no disrespect to the man, but I'm telling you, look at the man's whole body, self, and personality. Mm. See, I could see like it's big. It's big, but, but it's, the foreskin is still too big. <sighs> I'm yeah. picturing like old, <laughs> worn, cracked leather. That's what I'm picturing. Cracked? You know, well, look at his face. Of his dick. He look at elephant his trunk. That was. The, I think those are acne scars. Are they? I. I, I think he has. I, I think he actually has some kind of skin. Wait, can condition. you get acne on your dick? I'm sorry. Oh, it's a sidestep. But now I can't stop thinking about that. Vincent, you're the producer. Google that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do it right now. Dick acne. Google. You need to know. You get acne. I'm gonna, gonna, gonna be on so many Google images, man. Dick. Oh, we're gonna, dick um, acne. Oh wait! I put. Oh, so I think god. We came to his oh my god! I'm I'm having like a Freudian moment. I didn't put dick acne. I put dick agony. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. Dick Hold agony on. is probably the best emotional state to describe watching. Bubble. Oh my god! All right, wait. Okay, wait. We got some. We got some feedback. Pimple on penis. What causes it and how it is treated? Uh, <laughs> So yeah, I mean it's skin. Of course you can yeah. get fucking acne yeah. on your dick. I mean, I mean it like like in a like a bacne kind of way, like a like real a, a issue. Really abundance. I Not like know. oh you know. Just, I got a black kid on my dick. Yeah. Although I want it like there's so much, you know, friction rubbing around in the pants. How do we get onto dick? <laughs> I don't know. We're, we're, we're talking about. Events? I don't know. Somehow we went from Danny Trejo's dick to this, or and you were talking about dick and the oh, double dick and the mom. Yeah, oh, and, the and, then mom. They, and then and well, then I will. There's um the the, so, the Chinese that, lady. We agree that Trejo is a big dick. Yeah. Right? Oh it's no, a no. Big dick. No, it I think it's just a scary not like, dick. Not like not like no not like impractically big, but yeah. like yeah. notice. I think it's meaty. Yeah. yeah. Like Thick. there's got to be good girth on that. If he had a skinny yeah. dick, I just. There's no, no way, way he could do what he does. Yeah, no way. No. There's no way. No, he's got he's got thick dick energy. He's <laughs> got that thick dick energy. It's different from big dick energy. Yeah. It's a different wavelength. It works different. Yeah, thick yeah. With two but uh, there's I guess I I feel like it was force, like a they a had a storyline that they kind of abandoned the idea of like forgiving your family. I think because there was a really old yeah, brother. They skated named over Happy. that. Yeah, <laughs> they skated over. <laughs> they were like, oh, we don't have time for Gyllenhaal. To to process the emotion of his mother lying to him his entire life. Oh yeah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, surprise, surprise! Turns out at the end of the film, and, uh, and Alex, I think you you said this earlier. Uh, uh, apparently, he uh, this uh, immunity deficiency he has. Yeah, it, it went away by age four, and his mom's been lying to him his entire oh, goddamn life, keeping him from experiencing any joy. Yeah. Keeping him seal, hermetically sealed in a bubble. And at this point, Alex got very violent <laughs> towards the film. First of all, <laughs> that was not the first time I got violent. It was. It, it was, was the first time I expressed yes. my anger openly. <laughs> and because she were finally, all with you. she finally confessed, and she's on her knee. Right. She's on her knees, and Jake is standing there, and she's like, "I lied to you your whole life, and you could have, you know, actually had a fulfilling and normal <laughs> existence." And in, and I'm just like knee her in the fucking jaw. You knee her <laughs> in the fucking jaw. I know. That, I don't care who you are. Right. Because once again, like we're saying, if this this is like this is a good like setup for like a horror film, where at the end of the movie, like the, the like he's called crazy and his mom like like won't let him out of the house, but she brings him like playmates to play with, and they're yes. like chained up. There you go. And sometimes he eats them, and then he finds out sometimes like sometimes he eats. Them. Sometimes he eats them. It, I so, mean, I'd say that's a leap, but that was the whole thing of that movie. Yeah. It was like they just be like, we don't know how to write our way out of this oh he gets hit by a bus into a train yeah fuck it <laughs> like that he's, he's a bubble he's also five but yeah no, i mean so like but like so she confesses this whole thing and he looks at her and there's a moment of tension and he just forgives her immediately i love you mom right first of all no no never, oh, never. hell no i don't care what kind of comedy you're running but he this could have given her one just one little pop to the jaw yeah. <laughs> You know, burst two of her teeth out, like her two front teeth. Because, you know, if, like, if you're slack jaw right. and someone gives you a quick knee to the chin, your teeth are banging together. These top two popping right out. She's bleeding uncontrollably. 
in the middle of church. And he forgives her. <laughs> yeah. Give her a quick shot to the yeah. face first. Yeah. That woman needed a punch in the goddamn face so she badly. Does. That whole movie. She does. See yeah. what this movie did to me? I well. I don't. I just uh, really what I wanted was I wanted the dad to murder the mom with a claw hammer. Right. <laughs> He, she had just run him down right. so much. Once just again, great premise for a horror flick. Then again, that's his fault, you know? <laughs> you don't have to beat someone to death with a hammer if right. you just establish a healthy give and take in a relationship yeah. from the get-go. You yeah. know? And just that's the lesson. Mutual challenging. That's grow to grow together. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, uh, heads up. Surprise, surprise. The director of this, Blair Hayes, uh, this, was the fir- yeah, this was the first movie he ever directed. It's a man. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah, it's a dude. You don't say. Yeah. Of course it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and every I, I'm done? looking at the list of everything else he's been in, he's directed. Never heard of any of it. Nothing. I just like, can't believe he didn't out. do. Uh, and he got fingered. So no, he didn't do that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Fearless, a TV movie. Okay. Night music. A TV movie. Were no. they all TV movies? No, after I, I'll, this? I'll say when they're a TV movie. So Fearless oh, TV, TV movie. TV. Uh, night music. Night music. Uh, a teacher's obsession. Was that a Michael TV McDonald movie biopic? <laughs> uh, Great Plains. Deadly detention. <laughs> you know that sexualized teenagers. Oh, oh you know ninety percent of that film was fifteen year was thirty year old women playing fifteen year olds being sexualized in a deeply uncomfortable way. <laughs> right. uh, Road less traveled. TV movie. Road Less Travel. Yeah, Road Less Travel. Uh, the Perfect Christmas Present TV movie. And the most recent one that came out last year. Is Hallmark or Lifetime? Yeah, I don't right? um, <laughs> There's something to do, like, especially, oh, speak of the most recent movie you directed, Every Other Holiday. That sounds like a Hallmark <laughs> fucking film. We just, just uh, got tired of titles. It's yeah. What's Every Other? Every Other Holiday. Yeah. It's like about, like, like on the calendar day every and, year. like, Arbor Day. Yeah, and then you skip that one. Yeah. Uh, so it's... Uh, yeah, no, here's the way. So he directed Ball Boy. The next movie came out in 2004. And then there's like a six-year gap till 2010. After Rehab? After or is Ball that... Boy? Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, yeah. At ten year, a six-year gap after the, 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 Ball the Boy. Fearless Ball Boy. And then all of a sudden, for the past, like, seriously, the past three or four years, he's been getting steady work. Wait, he's working now? Yeah, he's working now. Yeah. I was hoping you were going to say he's fucking dead. No. He did three movies in 2017 alone. I feel like we should watch one of those. Yeah. No, I, I, now I'm, I'm interested. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to look at What are the three? Or, or, uh, the the three one? were uh, Deadly Detention, Road Less Traveled, and... Deadly Perf- Detention has to be on the fucking agenda, yeah. man. That's, that, that's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to click on it now. I, I got to know what this is. It's, oh, yeah. Teenagers are getting sexualized. Huh? Yeah. You yeah. Know this. Uh, you the, know this. Uh, five. <laughs> I love the plot synopsis on IMDb for this. Five archetypal teens serving detention. <laughs> archetypal? <laughs> archetypal? I'm not fucking around. It says that. He five, really grew, huh? Yeah, five archetypal teens really serving detention grew. find themselves in a life or death situation. Why uh, did this cocksucker find himself in a life or death situation <laughs> and fucking die? Yeah. Oh my god! I gotta find this movie That's now. Amazing. Uh, it's like, let's take the Breakfast Club. Yeah. I just make it shittier and uh, more tits and more people die. Yeah, well, here actually, I'm gonna move the screen so you guys. This is the poster for it. So. Oh, of course. Oh my it god! Is. I'm so oh. sorry. Is that the Faculty? I don't. That it looks, looks like. like fa- first of all, the Faculty is a great bad movie. <laughs> yeah, because it's the fun. Fa- the Faculty is a great bad it's movie. It's fun. They defeat aliens with drugs. It's great. Yeah. Yes, I and learned it encourages a lot. teen drug use. <laughs> and John tries. Stewart. Oh, yeah. God, what a performance. Yeah, he, he is. You should if you haven't watched. Like, there's a couple of interviews where John Stewart talks about doing the faculty, yeah. and it's so funny. It's so funny. <laughs> oh man. Okay. So his glory days. <laughs> so uh, did we have any? I felt like we had more. You know, honestly, Bubble Boy more would have been better if there was more cameos, less yeah. racism, more cameos. Yeah, because let, let's go over all the the, the known like uh, cameos. So we had uh, known. <laughs> Well, there's something like, but remember, Zach Galifianakis wasn't really that That wasn't much. a cameo, though. Yeah, so. Like, uh, Schwarzenegger should have been in there. Schwarzenegger. I mean, I'm uh, assuming they didn't have Schwarzenegger money. Oh, they had no. Fabio. Fabio. Fabio came so out. They of have, if they have Fabio money, they don't have Schwarzenegger money. No, that's oh, hell like, no. one or the other. My nature. No, no, yeah, no. Fabio. <laughs> Five people made more money off the butter commercials than he ever did make off this motherfucker. Is he still alive? He is, but um, does he just do conventions? <laughs> meet, meet Fabio. Yes, he get lives some, at Steel City Con. Is what get, he <laughs> get, get, get a free gallon of I can't believe it's not butter <laughs> and a pocket spray. Uh, I don't trust that yeah, shit. I, I I can't remember. I heard. I think I saw somewhere online uh, uh, like recently, like he's let his body go because I was thinking about Fabio. His like this godlike him. body. Like good for him. <laughs> it's a fucking time, the poor bastard. <laughs> 
What, he's going to like live on almonds and yeah. like kale shakes and he's 60 <laughs> years old? Let the we, man live his he life. He didn't have any money left, so he actually has to live off of, I can't See, that's, believe it's that's not the butter. problem with and that's when you're happens. that good looking and that stupid is you think the money's never going to end. <laughs> Always does. Oh, man. I'm assuming Fabio did not invest wisely. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> He's just got a whole, like, storage uh, container of, I can't believe it's not butter. Yeah, <laughs> he just lathers he, it up instead of using sun, like, sun lotion. Who would have known <laughs> that a natural food movement would have ever sucked? <laughs> he was like, you shouldn't be eating that. You mean something that doesn't get liquid at room temperature? <laughs> something that will stay solid in a 100-degree sauna? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Keep putting that in your body. Uh, what's that chick's name? I feel bad. I can never remember. It's like Marley Shelton, maybe. Oh, hold on. Oh, I got Is that it. right? The lead? The chick lead. The, the one. I know hold her on, from I, I, Hold uh, on. Let me click out of deadly detention real quick. Hold I on. I only let me, know her from Grindhouse. Uh, Marley Shelton. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No, she was one of those faces that she was in a lot of stuff. Yeah. Back during that time period. She was that. Uh, uh, bubble I Boy, know. Never Been Kissed. Uh, yeah, these are all in that kind of time frame of... When yeah, I was and uh, yeah, she's still working. Was she the one with the Val Kilmer in the car? Is that no, no, she is? no? She is the nurse who's cheating on yes, what's his face? In Planet with Terror. Fergie, yes. That, she, she was in Planet Terror. I can't Planet confirm. Terror. Yeah, she was fucking. That Fergie. was the one I liked. I did not really care for the for the. Uh, it's not Val Kilmer. It's uh, Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell, yeah. yeah. Kurt, sorry, sorry, Kurt. And That's I, a gross disrespect right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, Although no, Planet Val Terror Kilmer has a good like sense Planet of humor. Planet Terror I liked was. I mean, that was one of the more, like, oh, so visually oh, disgusting. Yeah. And not, not in, like, a, uh, you know, like a hostile way where it's, like, no. really spiritually upsetting. It was, like, so juicy. Oh, yeah, pussy. pussy. <laughs> so much pussy. Multiple colors, <laughs> yellows and greens and what have you. Oh, man. Dude, oh. no, but it's it's yeah, but that's like the kind of disgusting that's that's like a fun disgusting. I mean, it's you know, it's in the title. Yeah, it is what not, it is. like Vince, so. Vince, is part of this where you don't watch the movie so it can be fresh for you as well? Is that part of it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, there are certain movies that I I seen like the first episode of Silver Screen Standups we did. We uh, watched Spider Man Three because the Venom movie was coming out around that time. Okay, um, and I had seen Spider Man. Bad movie. Spider Man Three is very unliked by the fan base, and yeah, uh, Spider Man. The problem with Spider Man Three is Sam Raimi, the director who directed the first two, was like, "Here's my idea," and Sony was like, "We want you to fit all this stuff in there too," and he was like, "That really doesn't work with the story," and it just became a mess. Is yeah. he that tall, handsome dude who does the shit, the vampire thing with the? No, no, Sam. No, Sam the Raimi did. Sam Raimi, he, Sam Raimi Sam did Raimi the did. Evil Dead franchise. Oh, I don't even know why I tried who to. Who the get hell are you talking about? I don't fucking. No. I want to think of Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> the tall, handsome vampire motherfucker. Didn't he? No, no, no. I'm thinking of the guy that directed that uh, the Thor sequel, the one Thor sequel with Kate Blanchett. Is it? Oh, Ragnarok. That was a uh, uh, Taika Waititi directed. That's that That's a very different name. Yes. Very different guy. <laughs> he he did. I think he did, he did direct some comedy where it was I was like I don't watch gothic. enough movies. I don't know why I even guessed. No, I, okay. I probably should have given you a heads up on that. I don't watch a lot of movies. <laughs> No, it's okay. I after this, after this tonight, way I don't too much. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever watch another one again. Yeah, I'm gonna say, yeah, I may have ruined this. I may have ruined the movie going experience for you guys. But you let somebody else watch Spider Man Three, and we had to watch Bubble Boy. I, to be clear, once again, I want to point out that I, I didn't remember being that bad. I pitched Last Boy Scout, but then again, you can't. <laughs> I think I mean the key is you couldn't have put Last Boy Scout for me because honestly I would not have let you guys talk this entire hour. I have so much to say about the Last Boy Scout. Do you like it? It's I one of, love it. I love that movie. I, okay, it's good. one of my favorite bad movies of all time. Oh, it's it great. is hideously violent. It's like. It, I mean, it's also super racist, but it's like very mis deeply misogynist, but in a way that's so over the top because it's supposed to be like film noir, yeah, but modernized to the '90s. And then they try to deal with like <laughs> just the just... issues of the NFL, like after the whole steroid scandal broke, where they're like, you know, the money's ruining the game, and you're like, why is this part of it? <laughs> it's, it's a it's a sexy action buddy cop movie with Damon Wayans and Bruce Willis. Yeah, and I think that's oh yeah, I, I remember really? it from back in the day. Halle yeah. Barry's breakout role. Oh, okay. really? Yeah. 
Well, maybe she's we'll, Damon we'll, Wayne's girlfriend. She's uh, yeah, I don't she, even she remember does a striptease. Oh man, you I mean, I love no, no, I just remember who did that though. But I that maybe has great like lines in it, like which Total Recall is another one of my favorite. I don't even know if that could be defined as a bad movie because it's so entertaining. Oh like, yeah, a that, Paul Verhoeven movie. I'm always down for that one movie. Is tongue in cheek yeah. when it's cheesy. It yeah. means to be that I saw that it's playing at Row House right now. Oh nice. And I've I've watched that movie. My buddy and I did the numbers over 150 times. Damn. Guaranteed. What? Guaranteed. This yeah. is why he hasn't seen many movies, because he's too busy watching <laughs> Total Recall. Recall. I'm watching Total Recall oh, again man. and again and again. Uh, well, maybe we will do the, uh, the last Boy Scout on a future episode, assuming I can convince you guys to do this again, which if you say no, <laughs> we, once again. We'll never make it there. I, 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 once again, I said this earlier. There was a few times while we were watching Ball Boy, I looked at you, Alex. I looked at, uh, at you, Liz, and I was like, what have I, what have I done to these people? I, yeah, why? I kept, I I kept, kept trying to, I kept trying to get angry. Like, yeah. I kept trying to get pissed off by how bad it was, but, like, yeah. instead of getting angry, I just kept being defeated. <laughs> It, it, it was like this rare combination of stupid, right. pointless, plotless, racist, misogynist. It was a it was a fucking a lot of ists. an incel bible. That was the thing I hate the yeah. most. Like there were so many movies in the nineties that were like rom coms where it's like the nice misunderstood boy. And I'm like, do you have any idea how many how many fucking Reddit <laughs> posters these goddamn movies that's, made. Oh my god, that's why I got 5.6 stars out yeah, of 10. Yeah, all those guys like, oh, <laughs> that whore never should have left the bubble boy. He was so emotionally in tune with her, just like I am with all the women that I angrily message on Tinder when they won't fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> they both like Land of the Lost. That's their connection. Oh, what, are these whores too busy sleeping with guys who have triceps? <laughs> bubble boy gets me. <laughs> oh, he was it's, so the Chad. Like was, the Chad that they always talk about the, the I, re- I read a lot about incels don't do it go we got, no, i mean not i just i got i got sucked down one long form journalism article and i made it halfway through and i, w- I just like i on i wanted to just cut my dick and balls off like, <laughs> i can't be a part of this anymore <laughs> no it's, it's, like, I don't, it's just so funny because i'm like i don't get go to therapy and go and eat some pussy and like trust me everything's fine <laughs> that's the problem <laughs> <laughs> If any incels are watching the show tonight, I listen to what Alex has to say. I think he's got some good ideas here. Therapy for at least a year. <laughs> Probably stop talking to your mom. I'm assuming. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> no. Or at least or get rid of her corpse or, or out of the basement. Your mom one or the other. <laughs> I feel like it's either it's one or the other. Talk to your mom way more or get out of her basement. Like that's, <laughs> that's what we're, we're trying to solve the incel problem right now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. uh, No, I I see too much of this and so many other like groups and facets of of society, and I just can't stand to have the internet anymore. Like, I hate to sound like one of those people, but it gets too much. I just have to like shut my shit down. I just be like, I can't read that these people are real. To be honest, I'm like, I'm I'm like a grandpa. I go to like three websites. (laughs) (laughs) I go to BBC News uh, to check on the happenings of the day. I go to longform.org and longreads.com because it's just quality journalism. <laughs> I'm also not joking. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. How the only X recommendations for the only three places worth going on the internet. There you go. <laughs> Everywhere else can fuck it. I don't know. YouTube can be fun. <laughs> uh, look at this Russian is also a great. I think that's an Instagram page. I don't really know. Look at this Russian. That's real. Works. Yeah, it's, look just, up now. it's all these clips of okay, that's exactly of yeah. Soviet bloc dudes doing insanely dangerous and very stupid things and recording it. It's absolutely fucking incredible. Oh wait, that's not what I'm thinking. There's another page that's just like clips, but it's just like it's just like a day in Russia. I forget it's called something in Russia. And it's yeah. me while in Russia, I think is what it is. Meanwhile and it's just like Russia. a random yes. little yes. cut. And it's, oh, it's could so be good. anything. And you're like, what the fuck is yeah. this? Watch an hour and 20 minutes of Meanwhile in Russia way before you watch Bubble Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honestly, I think somehow this hour long talk about Bubble Boy had significantly more plot and substance than we a can movie. pitch this. How much? What was the fucking budget for that thing? Can you oh, look? look I will look it up right up. now. Hold on. I don't know how many goddamn millions of dollars. That's the other thing that was pissing me off so much. 
Yeah, it's, it's like the easy thing, but it's that we think so many times with like a horrible movie, but like someone pitched this. Yeah. Someone sat oh. through that meeting. Somebody like. Uh, it better be shoestring. Uh, $13 million. Jesus. And it made. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay. Did it, ma- well, did it make million money? Dollars. Box. <laughs> Tell me it lost money. Box office. To, oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, oh God! Oh, no. it, only, it only made five million dollars. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, it's going to go the other way. Oh, it didn't even break just, even. Justice. Oh God. Jesus. Jesus. God. Wow. Yeah. I, uh, I, oh. uh, man, that producer who tried to stretch <laughs> stretch that into a movie. Thank God he lost his job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the only thing I kept trying to think though, I was like, you know what? This did give union film crew operators work for yeah. however long it takes to make a movie. And I'm sure like, you know, the boom operator is just shaking his head constantly <laughs> for, for the, you know, three weeks it took to film that or whatever the fuck. <laughs> It, it had an airplane sequence. Though. It did. So, like, like there was a real airplane. <laughs> well, it, it, it transformed into CGI later, but there was yeah, legit. There was like, a single engine Cessna. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Piloted by uh, Pippi, the brother of Peppy, who drove. L- a- later, they gang banged some old Asian lady. Yeah. The other. That was the other. That was the other. They, there was a gang bang of gang bangs. That, that, that's Pappy. another like gang weird. Of gang bang. That's another weird theme of the film, like women with two men. And, and, and it's, so it's like three people, three and three, right? Because yeah. you got Bubble Boy, uh, his love interest, who uh, she has no name in my mind, uh, and then her Chloe. asshole boyfriend. Clo- good work. Uh, yeah. Chloe and like Chloe's asshole boyfriend. Uh, Mark. Mark. Good work. Good work. Weird. Good work. Good work. Good. No, I'm going to go that. kill myself now. I know that. It's never going to get right. out. There's uh, uh, Bubble Boy's go. mom and dad and Danny Trejo, and then there's Pippi, Pappy, and... Uh, <laughs> Poontang. And, Poontang. And Poontang. Poontang. Or so Poonani. They couldn't say, they no. couldn't say Poontang. Right. They kept, like, whatever. They could say Poonani. But they yeah. kept leaping. Well, well, with an engine it was warp. An, like a, yeah. Well, everybody knows what Poontang is. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> It's supposed to be a joke because she's Asian, so Poonani sounds Asian, I guess? So does Poontang in their mind. Yeah. I don't really get... I don't really know what happened with that either. Was it two different people? Was she one person? She was one person. Why did she have two names? She had a sister named Poonani. And, and and after her sister died, she carried on her sister's legacy and changed her name. And then to double men. teamed. Right. But they Those both died too. Dudes. That's another thing. They both died we in thought, the movie. We thought they, we thought they uh, died. They somehow survived. Yeah. Th- I mean, to be fair, this is the one time that the, the cohesion of the logic holds up. You, they didn't check the pulse. Yeah. He assumed fair enough. they were yeah. dead. Maybe they're just old and asleep. Yeah. He woke up like. <laughs> Like we can go into it, but I don't know. You know what really happened, actually? What? And this is what that, that missed scene that we didn't see at the end of the credits, is that when Bubble Boy went over the falls at Niagara, he actually died. And, and the rest everything. Was a fantasy. All fantasy. <laughs> it was like, uh, what's that? Uh, Ambrose Bierce, uh short story. Nobody. No. Fuck. An occurrence at Owl Creek. Oh, okay. Like that. Uh, I don't think, Spoilers. I don't think anyone who's watching this is going to know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's really good short story. We got a few people watching. We got some people. Um, Liz, your friend. Uh, I don't have any friends. Zion Tarver? Oh, really? Yeah, she says, hey, hey. What's up? All right, Zy. And somebody named Mustafis Monoff says, call me. Do we? Does anybody know Mustafis? Are you hot? <laughs> <laughs> I have really low standards. He's low not designating who to call. I gave him a, I gave him a like just to be nice. <laughs> right. I, Mustafa, I don't know who you are, but thanks for watching the Silver Screen Stand Up's uh, uh, podcast live stream. Call thanks for tuning me. in. Call me. We'll talk about Ambrose short <laughs> stories. <laughs> <laughs> Do I know this guy? No, he's not. You could even say his name. I don't think you know him. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a Russian bot. <laughs> Take. It's from. It's from. Meanwhile, in Russia, he heard me say "incel" too many times, and he's like, "Oh, we can get these guys to vote the wrong way." Oh <laughs> uh, shit! All right. So, how much time we got? Okay. Uh, all right. Let me see. Alex. Yeah. If you could describe this movie in five words or less, how would you describe it? Fucking waste of time. Fuck. Yeah, no, that that, that, that's, that's that, that, fits, that fits the bill. That fits the bill. <laughs> um, <God. laughs> it just really is like remember I was like, I, mean, I haven't seen it in like probably fifteen to seventeen years. Um, 
And I, did I'm you like, see it in theaters, Vince? No, I didn't see it in theaters. Were theater. you part of that five million? No, <laughs> you fucking no. lie. I did not add to it. I waited until <laughs> it came on TNT lie, one mate. night. <laughs> yeah, I think I watched it on like regular cable yeah. with like commercial interruptions. Yeah. And I just, I don't, I just, I like, I, it's one of those movies where, like, it goes to show just how far Jake Gyllenhaal's career has come. Like, he he's did an, Donnie Darko before this fucking yeah. thing. I don't understand. That does seem like his agent giving him terrible, yeah. terrible events. Like, look, you did Donnie Darko. Okay, weird art house movie. It's not going to have any lasting appeal. You got to do the big, you got to do the big hit. You got to do the Hollywood number. That's yeah. going to eat a big, fat shit pile at the box office. <laughs> And you're never going to forgive yourself, but at least we got a shot of your sweet ass and, Liz, as you pointed out, weirdly hairless legs. Really? Like, shiny? Kind like of upsetting. Waxed. Oh, they waxed made, it in. Oh, you know they made him shave. The it's, bubble boy can't be hairy. Those look waxed to me. Those I mean, were beyond shaved. I, it, was a little, it was slightly upset. I couldn't stop staring at it. It looked like two hot dogs. <laughs> Glistening. Two pale hot dogs. Two glistening hot dogs and that sweet <laughs> ass. Peel, peel based hot dogs. Yeah. And a sweet, <laughs> sweet ass. And they did, I will say, this movie was good for anyone's perspective of his of his dick. Because we had the boner scene, which was a very, it was a very significant boner. Well, I mean, the thing is, for comedic effect, boners in film have to be hilarious. Like, they have to be huge. I mean, to really translate. Yeah, but this wasn't a comedy. <laughs> So. I think it was trying to be. <laughs> it, it thought it was. It was a mistaken assumption it was a comedy. The goal of that was to be a comedy. Yeah. I think it was supposed to be a slapstick comedy. That was the is end. Is this game. like when people see Cabin Fever and they don't get it? it? Is a comedy and they just think it's a horror movie? Is it? <laughs> it's in reverse. I was horrified. All right. Well, um, I, I don't think there's really much more to say about this film. It's just bad, horrible. Like, oh my. God damn it. Oh, wait. No, I'm Vince, sorry. Gotta, One more important these, thing we did skip. Next time. <laughs> they did make sure to make a Jewish joke. We forgot that. Uh, yeah, we forgot. Yeah, they, they took a shot at the oh, Jews. yeah, and honestly, and the one, like, the one line was okay. Because it was just like, so the fundamentalist Christian mom, in order for Jimmy to hide his tracks, the dad writes a fake ransom note, or Jimmy does. Who gives, who fucking knows? Yeah, I was confused. Yeah, that they and just like, dropped that, It was too. like, oh, give us, you know, some money. Uh, we took him the Jews, which is funny because <laughs> yeah. it's like, oh, the fundamentalist Christian mom would believe that yeah. it's, that's funny because of her hate. Her hate is funny. Yeah. And then we were like, actually, you know what? That's not bad. They're yeah. playing into an angle. And then she follows it up with just like a hateful stereotype yeah. that's, that's supposed to be right. the fucking tag yeah. to the joke. You're like, oh, well, ruined yeah. it. Fucking hey. great. Good job, guys. <laughs> the one the one joke that was actually written into the script that Zach Galifianakis didn't <laughs> riff. <laughs> and you murdered it with your stupid right. You couldn't You had one good joke. <laughs> you just had to strangle it to death. Oh, man. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for anyone who was tuning in on live stream or if you're tuning in on SoundCloud or the River's Edge website, wherever you tune in, thank you for <sighs> tuning in to another episode of Silver Screen Stand Up. Thank you to Liz Tripoli and Alex Helmack for joining me once again. I, I legitimately feel bad. I shit. feel fucking horrible. Really I, <laughs> it's not good. I, gotta, I feel like I got to go to like a cleansing or something. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, we'll be back next month, second Wednesday every month, watching bad movies. Uh, who knows what we're going to watch next? Hopefully nothing th bad, but not this bad. I feel like I gotta take it just Fun like bad. one star up, just Fun one star bad. up. <laughs> Fun bad, buddy. Fun bad. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look. Maybe you know. Maybe we'll. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna fucking research this time. Research it. I'm gonna research. Yeah, We're gonna go. We're having something good. To work. Two more comedians next time. It's gonna be a good time. But once again, I want to thank uh, the Rivers Edge uh, Network for hosting this show. Uh, and don't forget to tune in every Thursday, live streaming on our uh, P.O. Vincent Facebook page, the P.O. Vincent Podcast, movie review and movie news. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy. <laughs> <laughs>